Hello, and welcome to a short review of the Hornby Midland Compound. Forty-five Midland Compound locomotives were produced from 1902 to 1909. They were then withdrawn from 1948 to 1953, one was spared from the cutter's torch being the number 1000 that you see on the model. The locomotive comes packed in the normal early 1980s Hornby packaging. It comes in a two-piece polystyrene tray. So this loco is quite old. Um, I have its paperwork. Um, it says it was made on the 3rd of December 1981. So it's 42 years old. And you could still get this model, or you could at least get it until very recently in a black livery in the Hornby Railroad range. However, that was Loco Drive. This has the Ringfield motor in the tender. Now, it is nowhere near as good as anything Hornby or Backman makes now. But for a model of its age, I think the detail is reasonably good. The Loco has the running number 1000 painted on the smoke box door. And it still looks rather good. And the smoke box door hinges are painted as well. And because this loco is a Midlander, it does not have a smoke box dart. Um, the buffer beam has some nice riveting on it. And a decently moulded coupling hook. It would probably look better if it had some black paint or some silver paint on it. This loco actually has a smoke generator in it. But it doesn't work. And I'm probably just going to remove it. This is something you see on quite a lot of Hornby Locos of the era. The two slide bars are metal, but the piston crosshead itself is only plastic, and it does look rather out of place. The Loco has separately fitted handrails, which I believe would have still been a relatively new feature for 1981. I believe Hornby started introducing it in the mid to late 70s. The locomotive has a brass whistle, though the safety valves are only plastic. The locomotive's cab is fairly basic. There's no separately fitted detail, but the detail that's been moulded is picked out in gold. And I think it looks quite nice. Um, I was very impressed with that when I got this model about four years ago. Not so much anymore, um, just because I've had a lot more experience with newer models. But compared to like all the Triang models I had um, as my favourites back then, this blew me away. Like a lot of the Hornby steam engines of the era, this tender has a rather tall coal load. That's because the Ringfield motor is under it and it wouldn't fit if it had a more realistic coal load. So that's why the tenders on these sort of 80s Hornby locos are always a bit full. There's a look at the beating heart of the Hornby compound. It's just the standard Ringfield motor that was in every Hornby tender engine at the time. I got my locomotive about four years ago for about £40, which at the time was fairly expensive for me, but cheap for one of these. Um, these compounds used to go for about £50, now they're up to £70, um, and that's for the Ringfield ones. If you want one of these and, you know, you're looking at them, if you can find one of the later Hornby Railroad ones, that's probably the better option because they're probably going to run a lot better than this thing does. Um, yeah. Now time for some running. 